All right, here we go. Uh, interview number four with Nick Gilmer. Okay, so question number one. What is your history with motorcycles? Uh, well, uh, mostly, you know, I started out really young riding dirt bikes, of course, like most guys or that have been, been involved with it most of their life. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think the first time I ever got on a bike was my dad had an old 80s, early 80s XR200. He, he literally like slapped me on, you know, in his lap and in between, it, like just right in front of his legs there. And I just kind of held onto the the bars, and we'd ride around Clackamas when it, when it was still like all fields and stuff. You know, now it's a bunch of industrial buildings, but we'd go hit a bunch of you know, just random trails around Clackamas and stuff. I was like, oh man, I'm I'm stoked, I'm into this. And, but growing up, you know, we we didn't we couldn't really afford to get me a dirt bike, so I just kind of always rode buddies quads and dirt bikes and stuff, and learned where I can and. And then, you know, I kind of got away from it in high school, getting into cars, because, you know, when you get your license, you yeah, just... Yeah, you want to drive. <laughs> yeah, you want to drive. You want to meet girls, and you want to, you know, you want a flashy car to do it. <laughs> there so, you go. So, got the, you know, I got the high school job working at a, working at a little um, old folks home, and saved up money, and just really got into cars, and dumped all my money in cars, and actually kind of walked away from walked away from school at that point and just didn't do a lot of homework and stuff. I graduated and everything, but just like, didn't really, you know, just, I was infatuated with the motorsports world and, but I think after high school, uh, it, the car things started to die down and I, I, I started noticing a lot of sport bikes out on the road, I'm like, man, that looks like a lot of fun, you know, just, I was always infatuated with speed, you know, I wanted to go right. fast, just like, Rick, <laughs> like Ricky Bobby, only Nick, Nicky Bobby, you know, Bobby. <laughs> so I just, I want to go fast, and so like, uh, actually, my mom got involved with a guy that started riding. And he he had this old Jixer, and I was like, man, that's sweet. And, and he got me to buy my first bike, and I bought my first, first sport bike at least. And I bought my first sport bike in my late teens. And just, so, what was your first bike? Uh, it was actually a it was a Jixer, just like his. And, and then uh, you know I didn't own it for very long, and just I, I got I got out of it again, and just, but then I started riding all my buddies' dirt bikes later on. I was like, God, I really miss this, and just, you know. And then I I say it wasn't until probably about 21, 22, I bought uh, an 06 GSXR 600, and um, I just I fell in love with it again. It's like oh, I forgot how much I love this. And I started taking all the riding classes. It's like okay, now that I'm starting to like really build my skill level and you know, I just became obsessed and just it just grew from there and then like later on I noticed uh, I noticed I started noticing the Wyotech commercials like oh you know I, I, from that whole point you know, I've been working on cars a lot and I was tinkering with bikes every once in a while but never really got into the mechanic side of it but then I saw the Wyotech commercial and, and like one of their ads showed you know hey you know I'm a, this guy showing that he was a technician for a race team and I was like, oh, dude, that'd be such a good way to get involved with racing, because like yeah. that was that was actually you know a goal that I'd always had. Like, I always wanted to race in the AMA when I just I got obsessed with it, you know, watching like yeah, right. watching professional Zim riding. Yeah, just watch all those guys, Zimke and Spees and Maladin and everybody, you know. And oh, I was like, you know what? I'm a good mechanic, you know. That's another thing. Let's let's get into the mechanic side of it, you know. You know, if I can't if I can't get into the AMA professionally. At least I have something fun to fall back on, dude. Where I'm still involved with the motorcycle world and having a lot of fun with racing and everything. So I went to WyoTech, thinking, oh, sweet, you know, I can. That'd be a good way to get my foot in the door. Maybe become a technician on a race team, you know, if I can get connected with the right people, and then eventually maybe become a test rider, and then maybe you know, hey, prove my skills and say, hey, you know, like, could I, yeah, put me on a, you know, at least a backup rider or something, you know, if, if this guy got hurt, you know, like that was my whole plan. So I went to WyoTech. I did really well, you know. I I made like their honors list and everything, and. And uh, I got to go to a lot of big events with Wyotech, <clears throat> um, a lot of MotoGP races, because it's in the Bay Area, so I got to go to Laguna, and, and uh, I actually went to Miller one time, um, and uh, just just helping them out with whatever, you know, and got to see all the race teams, got to meet all the racers and techs and everything, and, and uh, I actually was doing so well with uh, their... their uh, 
their European program because I already knew Japanese bikes pretty well so I, I went into the European program I was doing pretty well with it and uh, I got noticed by Ducati of North America and uh, one of their their head technician directors or whatever uh, technical director he, uh, he came down and interviewed me and a couple other guys and they picked me out of the whole school to do like wow. a little do a little internship with Ducati of North America. That's cool. They flew me to Day, uh, Daytona for Bike Week and to help out with the 200 and everything and and the, and the AMA races that were going on and and I did, actually got to do this big display when the 848 first came out and uh, I, I like I tore the bike down. This is my first time touching it because it, we hadn't got it at school yet because it just came out so. I tore it down in front of everybody and it was like explaining to like a big crowd of how the desmodromics work and how this works and that works and everything, you know, and then I put it all back together before we, like, not even two hours before we had to leave, like pack everything up on the truck and head back towards the west coast, That's you know, awesome. and then I actually met, you know, I met Arun from Moto Corsa there and uh, it was really cool, you know, I said, like, hey, yeah, man, if, you know, Portland's your hometown, whenever you come back, let me know, I'll hook you up with a job, entry level job. And, so I started working there, and I just uh, you know, I just over the years I kind of been in and out of other motorcycle jobs, and just working on my riding on the side, doing track days whenever I could, and then of course I uh, got really back into dirt bike riding again, right? Uh, just a couple of years ago, and uh, forgot how much I loved it, and, and then just recently, last year, uh, me and all my coworkers. At an auto shop, I started just started working at. Went up to uh, the Escada Mountains to do some trail riding on my fully built 450R motocross bike, and uh, I decided, hey, start being a show off and doing wheelies up and down the road, and caught a little too much, a little too much throttle, and just an awkward motion, and lost my balance point, you know, and. And I had wiped out before as a kid, screwing around doing that stuff, and no big deal. But this time, you know, I, I caught the bullet and I landed on my tailbone on some rocky terrain, and I burst my T12 vertebrae and had to be life flighted off the mountain, and yeah, and uh, <laughs> sat in the hospital for a couple months. So, and then they finally told me that I'm probably never going to walk again, you know, and then they didn't even know if I was going to be able to get any movement back from the chest down, but now, recently, I've gotten everything down to my hips back, so I can, I can move my hips a little, so that's that's cool, you know, I'm really excited about getting at least that much back, and, yeah. but yeah, and I'm actually, I'm, I'm riding again, um, uh, you want me to get... Well, so, that story. so his, you're you are heavily ingrained in motorcycles I since mean, day one, basically. Yeah, there's I mean, um, there's a lot more super deep sure, into it. Sure, sure. You know, we'll of, go into that. Um, because I'm only on the first question. Yeah, yeah. No, I just I didn't know how. <laughs> no, much no, you that's great. To get that's into totally it, great. Know? Um, that kind of just segues into the rest of the the interview. Um, there's definitely a few years I left out there. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. So I mean, basically, dirt bikes, then road racing. Back to dirt bikes. Yep. And now back, back to, to road, road racing. racing. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a good, yeah, that's... Back and forth. It's yeah. good, a good mix. Oh, that's cool. Um, there were some classic bikes in there, too. <laughs> some cafe stuff. So at this point, paraplegic. Yes. Uh, from the dirt biking accident. Yes. Um, let's just go with... Oh, and the and so, so now you're doing road racing. Yes. Uh, and you're currently riding a ZX6R? Yes, I have a 2006 ZX6R. I actually haven't started road racing yet, but that's my plan. Okay. Uh, I've been doing I've been doing a lot of track days with motocourses so far, you know, ever since I got my motorcycle adapted. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, So, I, I mean, I, the next question is, what was the most serious accident you've been in? That obviously being yeah, the most it serious. Was, that was um, the most serious. Uh, and then, what? I guess, what was the what was the hardest part about recovery? Um, you know, a lot of people would say, you know probably say like all the pain you have to go through, or learning how to do this or that. Believe it or not, actually, I think the worst thing was coming home and. Cause I, I got my own place, a little rental house in Gladstone, Oregon. 
I think, you know, just coming home, sitting at home alone, and staring out the window, and watching bikes go by on a nice, warm, sunny day, and just thinking, man, I wish that was me right now, and I'm stuck in this house, I can't go anywhere. I didn't have a car at the time, you know, and hadn't gotten any hand controls or anything, so it was just... I think that really got to me a lot, you know, some days I just literally sit there and I, I couldn't help it, like, I just sit there and fucking, sorry for the cursing, but <laughs> I just sit there and cry, you know, it's like, I, and I'd never been, like, a super emotional guy until that point, honestly, yeah. it's like, but it felt good to let it out, like, I just, I had to get it out, I had to, so more the, the mental aspect yeah, no. of being there and you're, trying to run, run all that through your mind. You're literally at like mental warfare, right? you know? Yeah. At war with yourself is twice as hard as at war with another person physically, right. I swear to God. You know, it's just... And uh, I was lucky to have my dog, actually. Yeah. I, I got a really nice little two-year-old German Shepherd puppy, man, and he just, he's my world when, <laughs> when my, the rest of my outside world's crashing down, so literally. <laughs> do, you, do you think that the, um, the thought of riding again also kind of propelled you oh, to have a good I mean, attitude uh, during recovery? Not, at, you know, at, at first, no. It actually just depressed me even more. Yeah. You know, I just, because I didn't know I could do it. I just, and I never knew if I was going to walk again, or I didn't know if I was even going to get anything back enough physically to be able to do it again. So it right. just, you know, and, and you, know, you just, eventually you start seeking out inspiration. Um, uh, some Something to strike it, you know, just to like, hey, I need to get out of this rut. So what inspired you? It... It was a, um, you know, a big collaboration of things. Sometimes I would just listen to music, you know, because sometimes you know, people in the world that have already gone through crap can, you know, they'll find their way to to get the word out to you, like, hey, man, you got to keep carrying on. Yeah. Good, good example. Uh, I don't know if you like the band Fun or not. That song, Carry On. Yeah. Uh, like I, you know, find little hints in there, like, oh man, yeah, I get what he's saying. Or like, uh, like, like another example, Coldplay, the song "Fix You." You know, it's very literal in that sense. It's like, I just, I don't know, you know I find anything I can. It's like, oh man, just, you just kind of feel it deeper and just, sure. just kind of find something to strike. And and uh, you know, eventually, I uh, just hopped on the internet. I didn't have internet service at home at the time, so I finally had my parents help me get some internet service going because I didn't have an income at the time. Sure. I just would start talking to people, you know, I started friending people on Facebook, hey, this is a motorcycle guy, this is a motorcycle guy, maybe he's been through an accident, you know, maybe he knows what I'm going through, and eventually I, I met a couple of people. I met a guy named Talon Skeels Piggin, kind of a funny name, <laughs> he's from the UK, uh, really cool guy, and has the same paraplegia injury as me, same level, and I noticed that he actually adapted his Suzuki SV650 race bike so he could go out and ride again, like at Donington and all those places. And I was like, holy crap, I didn't even know this was possible. I saw this shifter that he had, this electronic shifter. I was like, dude, I didn't even know that existed. Right. Things, it was like, oh my god, and like, my mind just clicked, like, I gotta, I, gotta I, gotta, I gotta do something now, I gotta get out of here, you know, it's, I don't care if I don't walk again, or I don't care if I walk again in five years or four years, I need to do something now, I'm young, I need to do it while I'm young and healthy, you know, it's like, I have a passion, this is the only thing I like in life, honestly, and, uh, and so I just started seeking things out, you know, and I, I got so into it that actually I would get irritated by maybe people that would be bothering me, like, dude, I'm so focused on this, please just leave me be, and actually, my girlfriend ended up leaving me at the time, <laughs> you know, I was like, and we, it became mutual, it's like, okay, right. you know, we gotta separate our ways, I got something I gotta do, and yeah, she went off and met a new guy, cool, I'm happy for her and stuff, but like, I just, I had this thing I had to do, and it's just, or else I'll never change my attitude, because yeah. I was like, I was turning into sour grunt, you know, right. it's, it wasn't right. me, I was always a happy guy, yeah. goofy and laughing about stuff, so... Um, were you scared to get back on the bike? Uh, you know, the whole time as I was raising the money and everything to get the adaptations done, I wasn't. I was just more along the lines of excited. <laughs> right. Just ready to start working on it and get into it. And But the second I went to go test ride the bike after we were done adapting it, and the second I hopped on it, it was a whole nother ball game. It was like, oh crap. I was like, it was sitting up high, you know, and sitting up straight, and just like, oh, like, 
finding my balance just sitting on the bike on its rear stand, you know, right. it's like it was just a whole nother game, you know, I just, it, that right there freaked me out, I was like, oh crap, I don't know if I'm even going to have the balance to stay up straight, so I was like, let's just practice going in straight lines, you know, let's, yeah. just, let's just practice straight lines, you know, yeah. And even then, like when they when they first let me go, me and my buddies, like I was like, don't let go, don't let go. You know? like, so you're riding this ZX6R with only hand controls, only hand controls, strapped in with some Velcro. You know, uh, some, your legs are, are pinned, clipped in, basically. Yeah, you know, it's just like this is just some testing periods, and just uh, <laughs> this was the first day, you know, back in July. Yeah. Uh, my buddies were just, they were, they were holding the bike up because I hadn't built a landing gear or anything. And uh, it, it was just intense. I was like, okay, okay, I, I can't feel, I can't feel, just let's stop, let's stop. You know, just, I was freaking out. It's like, it was, it was just a whole nother feeling. It, it was like learning how to ride a bicycle again, for God's yeah. sakes. And just, but with a motor. <laughs> yeah, with a motor. With it goes motor. really fast. I'm not pedaling. <laughs> I had, you know, 100 horsepower between my legs. So, right. <laughs> that's a whole Pretty nother. cool. <laughs> Um, how long, so, so with your accident, the, what are, what's the list of, of things that happened to you? You broke, you broke your... Oh, the list of injuries? Yeah. I literally, uh, well, I had, you know, a bunch of lacerations and stuff, obviously, uh, some road rash. Uh, I believe I, like, twisted my ankle, bruised my pelvis, bruised my tailbone. I mean, but the worst one was I did a burst fracture to my T12. So literally, the vertebrae itself just exploded. Okay. Because my whole spine compressed. And actually, I had just been to the chiropractor a week before. So everything was realigned. I was like, oh, I feel great. You're good to go. Yeah. And then <laughs> and then that happens. I'm like, ah, oh, mother hummer. Right. And, uh, but yeah, it exploded. So, like, they literally had to replace my whole vertebrae. But when it exploded... Uh, all the big chunks that slammed into my spinal cord, and it, it just it just bruised it, but you know it's still damaging nerve lines right on the inside. So nerve damage. Yeah, and it swelled up so bad that as it was swelling up, you know it it, it hit the walls of all the other vertebrae and just it started doing more damage to the nerves because of all the swelling. And, and I actually, when I first got hurt, I could feel all the way down to my just almost halfway down my thighs. But after the swelling started getting worse, I lost everything up to my chest wow yeah so but now over, over like the past year and a half it's coming down. it's coming back it's it's kind of it's, so it's back down to my hips with those injuries how long were you away from riding uh exactly one year one year yeah literally the day of that i got hurt we were out with my friends test riding my new setup on my bike that i had just done um so that was, it was pretty cool. That was actually a really revelatory yeah, thing. Yeah, and that's you know. pretty. I mean, even though it was for hot. your condition to go from from that to not thinking you're ever gonna ride again, oh, yeah. to walk again, to anything like that, it, it was and intense. Now you're, yeah, <laughs> I mean, even though the first day was super scary and intense, like it was still like liberating and it felt great. It's like, oh, you know, maybe this is gonna take a lot longer than I think to learn how to do this again. But we just kept at it. And, I did it. So, do your friends and family support you 100%. riding? 100%. 100%. Yeah. My, both sides of my, so my, my parents are split. They've been split since as far back I can't remember, you know. And I literally had, I literally had my mom and stepdad there, who, you know, my stepdad rides. Right. And then my dad, who used to ride dirt bikes as a kid growing up with me and everything. Uh, I had like all of them there helping me all at once, all my brothers, everybody. Just, yeah. It was awesome. That's was, cool. And of course all the guys from Motocorsa and right. everything, you know, they're, they're always there supporting me. For, for the track days, you know. Um, so, again, I mean, it's with some of these questions are a little redundant and no, it's with, with your your story specifically, I mean, there's there's other questions I'd rather ask because it's, it's just a, a more in-depth story um what what gear were you wearing when you crashed and then what gear do you wear now i mean it's kind of different because you were doing yeah it was a different type of riding right. so when i was on the dirt bike i had dirt boots on i had you know the right pants and i actually had some i actually used to wear uh, <coughs> knee pads because i was just i always racked my knees i don't know why yeah <laughs> or 
uh, oh, my buddy, I always let him ride in front of me every time we went trail riding, and he would always kick up giant boulders at my knees. I'm just like, really? So, so I learned my lesson from that and started wearing knee pads, just like painter's pads, you know, from like uh, Harbor Freight. But anyway, <laughs> so I wore knee pads, you know, I had a nice helmet, goggles, uh, but I always just wear gloves and a jersey, no chest protector, no back protector. Right. And I think, you know, that's what got me, was not wearing the back protector. Not wearing the back protector. If, 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 man, I just... And, you know, I have one for sport bike riding, and right. so now, now, I wish I was wearing it, you know, right. it's like, and the one I have actually goes down and protects your tailbone, you know, if right. I would have landed on it, it's like, I just think to been. myself, yeah. shoulda, coulda, woulda, man. Right. But you're still doing it, so they're, you know. Well, yeah, and, you know, now that I'm back, at least, road r or, you know, on the road track, you know, I wear every single thing I can. Right. Full gear, of yeah. course. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I've always been like that, just from watching road racing, you yeah. know, just... Always known to be good about the right gear. Um, and of course, they got rules out there. <laughs> so, I mean, the the next question is, what has changed about your riding? But at this point, we know that <laughs> you're everything. You're, you're everything. Yeah, yeah I it's, mean. it's a whole. It's always a whole other learning experience. I have to completely ride different than any other able-bodied person would. You know, so like. There's no influence from your lower half, so it's just right. it's all upper body weight and transfers. And you know, if I can hop my butt a little, I will. You know, from seat to seat, right. I can't throw out a knee. You know, for sport riding, and I haven't tried dirt riding yet since my accident, but I plan on it. And I actually want to try some supermoto too. And, cool. You know, that's gonna obviously require some can you custom adaptation. Can you tell me a little bit? Just describe the way that the hand controls. Yeah. How that setup is because it's so different. Um, well, you know, it's not super different actually. I have so what you would see on a normal standard street bike setup, but with an addition of an up and down button for my gear for shifting. shifting. Okay, so, so like paddle shifting on a exactly. Ferrari or something like that. And I don't know if you've ever rode one of the Aprilias, but they have that automatic Aprilia where you can actually, there's an up and down button right, right. there, right on your left hand side. And I, and like I had test rode that when it first came out working for Moto Corsa, and I was like, hey. And that's what kind of reminded me of that setup, you know, it's like, I could just kind of copy that, you know, and, just, and that's what I did. I just put a little up and down button right there. Right. And uh, put the electronic shifter on there, and it's just, this works great. I just, cool. I have to use the clutch to start, and I have to use the clutch for downshifting, you know, but for upshifting, I just kind of blip the throttle and push the button, and right. it shifts faster than I ever could with my foot. <laughs> so, yeah. it's just, meh. You know, do you feel like it's less to think about having everything right there in your uh, hands instead no. of no, no, <laughs> more, more going on there? Yeah, I'm just like constantly worried about putting too much weight on the front end because all my weight is going through my shoulders and my arms, you know. And then, of course, downshifting is a lot tougher. It just to be able to have to pop the clutch in and push on the down button at the same time, just like I, you know, there's some setups I could eventually do that all I would have to do is downshift, but I like being able to feather the clutch, you know, and just to be able to manage, you know, coming turn speed, so I just, it's, it's, it's just a whole other ballgame. I'm, I'm getting better and better every time I go out, you know, with it, and I just, the thing that runs through my mind is that, like, man, if my legs were working right now, I just can't imagine how much better of a rider I would be just relearning everything, you know, it's like, but... But I think yeah. for for what you're doing, you're almost creating like a new style. Of well, riding. you're creating a class of, of writing that is making it more accessible for for people that don't have the use of their body parts. Exactly. Right? So you're, I mean, you're really kind of inspiring that. I mean, along with the other people that are doing it, or inspired you to do it. Yeah, it's and it's like keeping that going, right? It's like a pay it forward thing, I guess. You know, and like, I, and I never meant it to be like that. I just wanted to do it because it was my passion, you know. Sure. And like, but all of a sudden, just like on Facebook, you know, I have people coming to me like, "Hey, I noticed that you're doing this again. That's awesome." You know, I just want to let you know I'm in a wheelchair and I used to ride, and like, I plan on doing this just because I saw you doing it. You know, it's really cool. I even have like friends in the UK that that. You know that they maybe had like some depressing time in their life, and they 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 came and contacted me like, dude, I saw you, and and like I just want to let you know, ever since I saw what you you and you're doing, my whole life's changed. I just had a whole new outlook, you know, to appreciate the finest things in life, my, you know, my daughters and this and that, you know. Yeah. 
and in riding in general because most of my friends on Facebook they all ride you know it's motorcycle world so we're a small family if you think about it and, um, so um, I thought that was pretty cool it was, that is really cool it made me feel good just, I've never had that kind of for people to just yeah just it, it sometimes it can be some pressure but you know at the same time it's like <laughs> I have this fan base so much. I think it was really cool, you know? Yeah. Just for doing what I love. That's the way it should be. Um, do you feel like you've become a stronger writer and person since your accident? Definitely a stronger minded person. Uh, physically, yes, <laughs> as well. Uh, my upper body is just like, upper body strength is like, multiplied tenfold you know it's just it's intense and <laughs> along with you know some physical therapy that I was doing last year it just I got so much upper body build I just, and you're actually also pulling yourself onto the bike yeah I, I you're get, doing everything yourself I push up and get myself up on the bike I throw my leg over and kind of do a push up on the tank to get my other my the rest of my body up and then you know I situate myself I put my feet in you know and yeah it's I've I'm I'm surprised actually because when I first got to rehab, you know, to for physical therapy, I, I was like, God, I watch videos on how they, all these paraplegics do all this stuff. And I was like, How in the hell are they doing this? And like, dude, you'll get it, you'll get it. That's what everybody told me. And, you know, I was like, No way. And now I'm there, you know, it's like, Now I know what to mean. Okay, cool. I just, I shouldn't doubt myself anymore, you know. And, and it doesn't sound like you are really. <laughs> You're definitely pushing through it. Um, I guess the last question, what what is your your biggest goal um, in the future for, for your writing career? Uh, I mean, I've, the, my biggest goal has always been the same even before I got hurt, and it's to one day race in the AMA, you know, it's, I think it's, it's slightly realistic, you know, it's, I'm not saying I want to be some famous MotoGP rider, you know, and make all this big bucks, I just want to be able to have the chance to at least, at least one race, one race, you know, go out there, race with all those guys I've always looked up to, you know, and just like, I don't care if they're passing me the whole time, if I'm out there hauling ass with them, you know, just to say, hey, I rode with Jig Zimke or I rode with, you know, whoever, you know, just like all, any of those guys, just, man, it's, it would feel awesome just, just to be out there with them and not not that I want the attention, but just the fact that like all eyes would be on me like, hey, look at that, you know, hey, look at that kid. He's just doing it. From randomly out of nowhere doing it, you know, maybe you just, maybe they'll strike some other people out there to go out and do the same thing, you know, and you know, maybe even just like, uh, I, I see a lot of our generation maybe getting involved with too much drugs or alcohol, you know, and not really doing like, the physical things that they used to love or, you know, or just being too infatuated with technology even, you know, and just like phones and computers and tablets. It's just like, dude, what happened to writing? Yeah, real. what happened to writing? Go out there and ride, you know, that's planes. <laughs> yeah. Go, you know, it doesn't have to be riding. Just yeah. whatever, you're going to play some baseball or basketball, whatever you used to do as a little kid, you know, it's just like, we forget all that, all those ways to have fun and maybe even, you know, if you like it so much and get so good at it, it can become your career, you know? It's like, I don't know, I just, everybody can do their part to push the world in a more positive way, you know? And I feel like we all have somewhat of a responsibility to do that and maybe this is my calling card for it, you know? Maybe that's why the big man upstairs left me here is to do this. I don't know. I feel like it, you know? That's, that's just what I want to do. I just, I don't want to stop until it happens, so. And, and I kind of want to branch off that goal, just, you know, just like show my kids, you know, hey, you know, maybe I only raced on a race, but at least I did it, you know, I ne you never try, you know, if you don't try, you'll never know, so it's just, and I can pass on that legacy to my kids and just be like, maybe they'll become successful because of it, and their kids will become successful, you know, and just, and maybe it'll spread to their friends and whatnot, and, you know, and then I, I also have another big goal, and it's, it's, you know, even if I don't fully get into the racing career, I would like to help other guys and with disabilities or physical disabilities, or even maybe partial mental disability, like, help them get back on the saddle, you know, like, and, uh, I, 
that's what I'm doing right now on the side of my own kind of life I got going is I'm actually starting to build a program to help disabled guys get back on the bike and maybe do some track days and cool I'm, I'm gonna over the next couple of years here I'm gonna start whatever I can with my own money or maybe fundraising I'm gonna start building bikes adapting them and collaborating maybe with some of the track day guys out there and I'm gonna start letting those guys, you know, maybe help those guys learn how to ride again. You know, maybe just in the parking lot at first, kind of get their basic skills down, just like I did. Same process. Maybe do some classroom sessions, you know, just kind of pass on my knowledge, you know, as a pay it forward thing. And, you know, maybe at the same time, maybe I can branch off into like a, like a post career with that. Sure. You know? Like, maybe open up a little shop adapting bikes for guys that want, for their own personal bike, you know, and charge them a little bit, whatever, you know, just be honest. And, uh, I got some plans. Let's just say That's that. That's good. Sounds yeah. like you, you got it. You, you, you got some things in mind. All right. Well, thank you so much, Nick. Yeah. Awesome.